Visual Soil Assessment, or VSA, is a practical science-based system for scoring key indicators of soil and plant condition. Soil scientist Graham Shepard designed VSA to be a cheap and effective tool for farmers to monitor soil quality, pasture and crop performance, and by linking that to management practices, improve performance and profitability. The origin of the visual soil assessment had its roots in the understanding that the economic and the environmental performance of a farm is very strongly correlated to the condition of the soil and the performance of the pasture. And so pasture and crop production, pasture and crop quality, uh, production costs, um, uh, food quality, the environmental outcomes of farming like uh, potential for nutrient loss, uh, carbon sequestration, greenhouse gas emissions, all these needed to be addressed in the, um, the uh, agriculture that we see today. But the problem was that farmers really didn't have a simple tool that they could apply themselves in the field. So I put together the visual soil assessment system as a way of repackaging the complexity of soil science into a format that can be understood by the farmer and layman generally. It's based on the premise that soils can and do change under different land uses and management practices. To characterise the soil condition, there are 10 visual indicators, and each of them are highlighted and outlined in detail in the book. The key part of the VSA system is to fill out the scorecard, and there are two, the soil indicator scorecard and the pasture performance scorecard. The choice of location of the sample is very important. I always pick a location that's pretty typical between the nitrogen hills. I've systematically taken a 200 millimetre cube of soil, which is the test sample. Everything in the VSA, the soil, is based on that 200 millimetre cube. And so we're interested in the condition of that 200 millimetre cube in terms of the structure, the porosity, everything about it, the number of earthworms in that 200 millimetre cube. So that is the primary component of the first aspect of the test. The first indicator in the scorecard in terms of soil indicators is soil texture. And we just take a, a little bit of soil, just a small amount, from whatever depth you like, but normally in the upper part of the profile. Just break it up in your hand into small aggregates. Take a water bottle, and you bring it to the point of maximum stickiness. Then put it in your, the palm of your hand and try and make a ball. A clay obviously will make a, a ball very readily. A sand won't ball, just not possible. Once you've done that, apply increasing uh, pressure. And we're going to note whether the, that sample cracks as we apply the pressure. And as you can see, it's beginning to crack which is indicative, it's one of the signs that we're after. A clay won't crack, it's so plastic and malleable, it'll just continue to be squished together without cracking. So that fits the definition of a silty clay. I've dropped the 200 millimetre cube three times in what we call this uh, euphemistically a drop shatter technique. So because it's a silty clay, we dropped it three times at a height of one metre. And uh, it didn't break up too readily, uh, which is not a good sign. And what I did is looked for signs of cracks, natural cracks that appeared as a result of that dropping pressure, and I prized it apart. This is the end of the sorting process after the drop shatter this um, example is in moderately poor condition because it only has one quarter fine material and three quarters very large structural units. Over here we have a situation where the soil is in good condition because it's dominated by fine material throughout. Apart from the texture and the soil structure, the soil porosity is a critical component. If we degrade the soil in a farm or a paddock, we are effectively creating a giant greenhouse gas pump. So we want to know what the porosity of the soil is like. Also, the porosity of the soil governs uh, many aspects about soil aeration, the ability of uh, the feeder roots to develop and explore through the soil. There are many, many um, aspects why soil porosity is important. 
I define the soil biology of a field as the, um, the essential part, the working part of a soil. So the earthworms are part of that and the mycorrhizal fungi, which is a microbe, is the holy grail if you like. The uh, soil smell component is, is again incredibly indicative of the biological health of the soil and what we're looking at, um, if it's, it picks up the amount of carbon, the type of humus that's present, the, uh, the type of organic acids that are produced by the microbes. Generally, if your soil is darker in colour, it will by and large have more organic carbon present than a, a lighter colour soil. To do the soil colour assessment, we take a sample from under a fence line because it's a protected area, it hasn't received cropping or any stock treating, and we compare that soil colour to the colour of the soil in the field. We're looking at the degree of difference in the colour. The colour is incredibly important because it's, it has a lot of accessory sta statements, one of which it indicates the amount of um, organically bound phosphorus and nitrogen that's in the soil. And it's also, as I mentioned earlier, um, indicative of the amount of carbon or can be, particularly in a cropping environment. The reason why we're looking at the pasture performance is we want to give the pasture its say about the condition of the soil it's growing in. So we're going through 10 visual indicators of plant performance, the first of which is pasture quality. It's incredibly important for many, many reasons, none more so than the feed conversion efficiency of the herbage going into the animal. If we improve that markedly, our pastoral agriculture would change hugely overnight. In terms of defining what we mean by pasture quality, we're looking at a number of indicators, a number of parameters. One of them is the percent green matter, another one is the percent dead matter, another one is the percent clover present, and we're also looking at the, um, the species um, um, diversity. Are we only dealing with a uh, clover ryegrass um, a sward? Or more importantly, are we looking at a, a sward with a whole lot more different varieties that are present there? And we're also looking at the bricks level within the pasture. And the bricks level is very, very important in terms of giving an indication of what the dissolved solids and the energy level of the pasture is. And we need to be careful how we use that bricks level but it can be a very definitive diagnostic tool that can indicate the overall energy that's going into the animal and therefore the ability of the microbes in the rumen to convert the pasture into milk, meat and fibre instead of nitrogen into the groundwater and nitrous oxide and CO2 into the atmosphere. Once you have assessed the soil condition and the pasture performance, you look at the two scores concurrently side by side. On the scorecard you literally put them beside each other and you're looking at the, uh, the performance of the soil relative to the pasture and vice versa. If you have a high soil score and a low pasture score, the question needs to be asked why is that happening? Because the farmer has a very good soil score, but the poor pasture condition, so he's not realising the economic potential of a soil resource. And so what management practices uh, could be uh, looked at to address that uh, difference in the, in the two scores. Alternatively, the pasture score could be a lot, lot higher than the soil score, and that can sometimes or often does happen. And uh, we immediately should ask the question, why is the pasture so much higher in terms of the scoring than the soil? Because they should be reasonably similar. And often the reason is because the farmer might be putting on, for instance, a lot of nitrogen in the form of urea just to try and give that boost of, uh, of pasture production. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.